Hello my dear learners, a very good morning everyone. I am Shashank and I welcome you all on English Medium Prep by Example, which is a complete English Medium channel. So students, very good morning everyone and welcome to the session and please confirm your attendance guys. Okay, Vijay, good morning and welcome to the session. Good morning and welcome to the session guys. And first of all, do confirm your attendance, then we are going to discuss and in today's marathon session, I have kept some of the good questions for SSC CGLT year 1 and eventually in the upcoming marathon we will be keeping the questions related to CGLT year 2. So many students said that okay, sir first of all please keep the questions of CGLT year 1 so that we have we have taken those questions which are high in demand and they have already came in SSC CGL exam. So Harish, Vijay, Chantharu, Vanakkam and good morning everyone. Good morning and welcome to the session guys welcome to the session everyone and in today's session i have kept the question related to cgl tier 1 so that uh, you should get well prepared for cgl and also for upcoming examination of cpo so upcoming cpo examination and cgl tier 1 exam i have kept the level of the question so sharvani very good morning and welcome to the session and students now let's begin the session of today let's start the session and uh, CGL tier 1 the level I have kept so that you can well prepare for CPO and also for tier 1 of SSC CGL. Now come to the next question first question of the session the question is ki, who among the following administers the oath of office and secrecy to the vice president of India so session starts with an easy question for you all so who conducts the oath of uh, who conducts the oath of post and secrecy for the vice president of India. So who conducts the oath of post and secrecy for the vice president of India and your timer has already started. So is it prime minister, chief justice? Okay, so chief justice, president or Lok Sabha. So Vijay, the first question itself and I was thinking ki definitely you will be giving the right answer but uh, it is not option B guys because chief justice of Supreme Court conducts the oath of the president not of the vice president so we are talking about vice president of india therefore i always say speed thrills but it kills as well speed thrills but it kills as well so what we are asking the office the oath of office of post and secrecy to the vice president so we are asking vice president that is not the president of india and vice president the oath is conducted by president and chief justice of india conducts the oath of president conducts the oath of the president so chief justice vice president oath is conducted by president and in schedule 2 Schedule 2 of Indian Constitution, Oath and Affirmation. Affirmation is mentioned. So in Schedule 2 of the Indian Constitution, Oath and Affirmation, it is, sorry, it is Schedule 2 that is related to the salary. It is Schedule 3, that is the Oath and Affirmations. And Schedule 2, that is related to salary then other emoluments so salary pension and other emoluments that is in schedule 2 schedule 3 that mentions the oath of that is the oath and affirmation so that is by the president of india lok sabha speaker conducts the oath of the different members of lok sabha so lok sabha speaker conducts the oath of the members of the lok sabha and Prime Minister guys does not conduct the oath of anyone. Now my question to you is ki who conducts the oath of pro tem speaker. Now my question to you is guys let's twist the question ki who conducts the oath of the pro tem speaker. So who conducts the oath of the pro tem speaker my dear learners. Lok Sabha speaker generally conducts the oath of the newly elect generally conducts the oath of the MP and he is also the presiding officer of Lok Sabha. 
presiding officer of Lok Sabha that is defined in Article 93 of Indian Constitution. Now, who conducts the oath of the pro tem speaker, guys? Now, my question to you, let's discuss if we are discussing the oath. So, who conducts the oath of the pro tem speaker? Okay, no oath is saying, Sharvani is going with the president, Chantharu is saying no oath. My dear, first of all, I was thinking, see, if it is the speaker, then no oath. Pro tem speaker, the oath is conducted by the president. Oath is conducted by president, guys. For the pro tem speaker, guys, the oath is conducted by the president. And no oath is for the speaker. No oath is for the speaker. So, speaker takes the oath as a normal MP. So, pro tem speaker, guys, is that a speaker who conducts the oath of newly elected members. So, pro tem speaker. conducts the oath of conducts the oath of newly elected members of Lok Sabha. So whenever the fresh election will be conducted, pro tem speaker will be appointed by president of India, the oath will be conducted by president of India and that pro tem speaker, what he will do, he will conduct the oath of newly elected members of Lok Sabha and also will, and also will help in the election of regular speaker. Once the regular speaker is elected, guys, that pro tem speaker will automatically vacate the post. So, pro tem speaker is a temporary speaker who conducts the oath of newly elected members of Lok Sabha that you will see after two years. In 2024, when Lok Sabha election will be there, then you will see ki again pro tem speaker is appointed by the president who will conduct the oath of newly elected members of Lok Sabha and he will help in the election of regular speaker once the regular speaker is elected that person will automatically vacates the office so that is the condition of pro tem speaker so tarik very good morning and welcome to the session good morning tarik welcome to the session so correct answer will be what it will be option c that is the president of india so i was thinking ki maximum of you will give the correct answer some of you they started answering Chief Justice. Chief Justice conduct the oath of the president. So, good evening, good morning, Sudip. So, correct answer will be option A and this is the first question that we are discussing. So, I hope guys you can note the question and otherwise I will give you the PDF as well. So, Chandrasekhar, good morning. Good morning guys, everyone. Welcome to the session. So, let's move to the next question guys. I hope this is clear to all of you and we will just cover the round and corner so that everything should be, be just carried out for the examination. So, put in good morning and now let's move to the next question. Next question is very easy question guys. Which of the following article deals with the protection of the interest of minorities? deals with the protection of interest of minorities is it article 40 article 29 article 24 or article 18 so good morning chandrasekhar putin tarik sudept good morning all of you guys and welcome to the session now which article deals with the protection of the interest of minorities protection of the interest now let's okay it will be easy for you to eliminate the option guys because you all know which article is related to what. Okay, everyone is saying article 29. Very good Jagdishwar and everyone is saying article 29. That's good. Article 40 that is related to organization of village panchayat. Article 18 that is abolition of titles. Then article 24, that is prohibition of employment of children up to the age group of 
14 years in any dangerous industry and article protection of the interest of minorities that is defined in article 29 and 30. So correct answer will be guys option B that is article 29. Okay. Now my okay please explain article 18 definitely I will be explaining guys but first of all let's discuss about the minorities then we will come to article 18 that is for the question of Chantharu. See article 29 says protection of the interest of minorities what type of minorities or how many types of minorities how many types of minorities they are mentioned in Indian Constitution how many types of minorities they are mentioned in Indian Constitution guys first of all we will discuss this then we will come to question of Chantharu explain article 18 how many types of minorities they are mentioned in Constitution of India so how many types of minorities are there guys in Constitution of India so Constitution of India defines how many types of minorities no 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 definitely not Bharat Ratna it is not a title at all so you must read Balaji Raghavan versus Union of India case six type of minorities okay so that so can you tell me which minorities are there in fact so what I have understood ki you there are six religions which comes under the minority so that you are saying okay first of all guys the number of minorities they are two one is religious minority next is linguistic religious minority and linguistic minorities are there my dear students okay hmm like religious minorities which are Muslims, Sikh, Christian, Parsi, Buddhist and now is Jains. So there are six religious minorities my dear students six religious minorities are there and linguistic minorities are those minorities whose language is spoken by very less number of people like Santhali like Bhojpuri like Urdu these are the people who belong to linguistic minorities that means that their language is spoken by very less number of people so in India guys we have two types of minority one is linguistic and one is religious so other than hinduism all the religions they are under religious minority other than hindus other than hindus all are in religious minorities and linguistic minorities are those minorities whose language is spoken by very less number of people so they are called linguistic minority like bhojpuri like santhali like garhwali so this type of languages they are being spoken by very few people or less number of people so that was about article that was about linguistic minorities now come to abolition of the titles abolition of the titles which titles that create artificial social barrier so those title which create artificial social barrier they have to be removed and the exception we have it is military and academic title military and academic title that you can retain military and academic title that you can retain now padma awards padma awards they are not title Padma awards guys they are not title I hope it is clear then you can read Balaji Raghavan versus Union of India case Balaji Raghavan versus Union of India case nineteen ninety six so that is in this Supreme Court said ki this 
Padma awards, they are not titled, so it is not the violation of Article 18. So, Janta Party government ended the Padma award, stopped the Padma award, saying it is a violation of Article 18. But in 1980, when Indira Gandhi re -ke again came in power, she started all the Padma awards. And finally, in this particular case, Balaji Raghavan versus Union of India case, 1996, Honorable Supreme Court of India said, Ki these Padma awards, this is not given for your social status or your economic status. This is given for the contribution of yours towards the society and towards the country. Therefore, they are not titles at all and that will not come under the purview of Article 18. So, I hope my dear learners, is that clear to all of you? Ki these Padma awards do not come under Article 18, that is, it is a title. It is not a title at all. Because earlier Rai Bahadur, Khan Bahadur, Sir, this type of titles were given either to those people who are very much influential, they are very much educated or they are very much rich. So that these titles were given by British government to cut them from the national movement so that national movement can become weak. So yes, that was around 1952 in fact. So that was around 1952. So this was all around about the things guys that is about article 29. I hope my dear students is that clear to all of you. I will be on the one side of the screen so that you can note the things and definitely I will be giving you this study mat as well. Is it clear guys? So Padma awards they are not title at all. So therefore it was being stopped by Indira Gandhi and sorry by Janta Party government according to article 18 but when, so when it was restarted by Indira Gandhi Congress government. I hope it is clear to all of you guys. Shall I move to the next question? And guys, we have six types of linguistic minority. And this year, you can uh, make a note of it. This year, please remember about the Parsi people. So this year, please remember about the... Oh, ho. Mm. This year, please remember about the... Parsi people. These here, please remember about the, so by mistake everything has been wiped out. So that was my mistake in fact. So apologies for this. What happened? So just I was underlining an important point and by mistake I put erase all. So finally it got erased. So pardon for this guys. This year, please remember about the Parsi. Please do read about the Parsi people because this year uh, Cyrus Mistri died. Parsi people. And especially about their burial system. About their burial system. Because the Parsi, what they use? They use the sky burial. So the name of the burial system. Burial system. It is called sky burial. It is called sky burial. Reason is this, ki they do not ha. And Navroz, that is the new year of Parsi. But Navroz, it is very common. By mistake, I have erased all the things I was about to write, but slowly, but uh, unfortunately, I clicked on erase all. So it finally got erased. So, Parsi system, they have sky burial in which they used to keep the dead bodies on a very long tower that is called the Tower of Silence. So, they keep their dead bodies, keep dead bodies in Tower of Silence openly. Finally, because they consider water plus fire very pious and they do not want to tarnish it so they do not want to tarnish it therefore they keep their dead bodies in a very long tower which is called tower of silence so that the carnivorous birds can eat but now the number of vultures they are decreasing so that has become a great problem for them so now they are moving for the but now they have changed their burial system now they are using the fire burial Hmm. 
they do not worry. See what happens in Parsi. Ki Parsi generally there are two methods. Now the number of vultures they are decreasing. That is a carnivorous uh, carnivorous bird. So what happened? Ki now they are using the fire burial system. But some of the but some of the Parsis they still believe in their traditional method of sky burial. They still believe in the traditional method of sky burial and this tower of silence it is between the Malabar hills that is in Mumbai. There is a place called Malabar hills where there is tower of silence and it's a very long tower where the dead bodies are being kept there. Now what happened ki due to the decreasing number of vultures and other carnivorous blood birds so it has become very difficult for their body to be decomposed of. So now they are using the uh, fire burial system that means they are using the same thing that they did for the Hindus. Now after the burning of the dead body they keep the ashes on the tower of silence. So that is now they are being practicing because the number of carnivorous birds they are decreasing very rapidly. So this is an alternative method but still the uh, still the method which is in mentioned in their religious text that is the sky burial. So method of burial of the Parsis they are called sky burial. Is it clear to all of you guys this question they can ask you what is the name of the method of burials of Parsis because Cyrus Mistry died for former chairman of Tata group and he was a very influential person as well very rich community very small in number. So I hope my dear is it clear to all of you? Is it clear guys? So types of minorities, linguistic minorities and all that. So correct answer will be guys option B that is article 29. So the method is the sky burial. That you can note because sometimes they may, sorry, sometimes they may ask this type of question as well. So correct answer will be option B. Now let's move to the next question. Next question is ki who was the chairperson of steering committee? Steering committee chairperson who he was is a Dr. Rajendra Prasad, J. L. Nehru, G. V. Mavalankar, Dr. K. M. Munshi. Steering committee. Who was the chairman of the steering committee guys? This type of question very easy and this type of question also get included in art and culture section. Art and culture section this type of question also gets included. Okay, let's see the correct answer. Very good. Sudipta, Chantharu, Sharvani, Chandrasekhar, everyone is saying option A. And Rajendra Prasad was the chairman of steering committee. And rules and procedure. Rules and Procedure Committee, he was the chairman. Now, J.L. Nehru was the chairman of the Union Constitutional Committee. Union Constitutional Committee. G.V. Mavlankar, he was the first speaker of Lok Sabha. And Dr. K.M. Munshi was the member of drafting committee. K.M. Munshi was the member of drafting committee. So correct answer will be guys option A that is Dr. Rajendra Prasad and correct answer will be option A and later Rajendra Prasad became the first president of Republic India. That is from 1950 to 1962. From 1950 to 52 as an interim president. And from 1952 to 62 as a regular president. So correct answer will be guys option A that is the Rules and Procedure Committee plus the Steering Committee. Now, I was reading the latest edition of the M. Lakshmi Kant. Now, guys, can you tell me ki who was the who was the Vice President of Constituent Assembly? Who 
who was the vice president of this constituent assembly that was created that on 11 December 1946 who was the vice president of this constituent assembly yesterday i was reading the new edition of lakshmi kant earlier i have the fifth edition now i reading the fourth edition of the sixth edition of the lakshmi kant there i have a very interesting information that was not being mentioned in the fourth edition that was not being mentioned in the fifth edition who was the vice president of the constituent assembly Okay, Ayangar, M. Gopala Swami Ayangar was from the, he was member of drafting committee, no Radha Krishnan. So we are talking about constituent assembly Chandrasekhar, we are not asking about Republic India. Okay, so that was H.C. Mukherjee, Harendra Komar Mukherjee, but we have the two vice presidents that I was reading in the Lakshmi Kant edition 6. It is not mentioned in edition 5, so that was a very interesting thing. So that was H.C. Mukherjee. and V. T. Krishna Swami. So I was reading yesterday that is H. C. Mukherjee and V. T. Krishna Swami. That means we have the two vice presidents. We have the two vice presidents. Once you will read the M. Lakshmi Kant. Sixth edition. Sixth edition. That is the latest one. There I have read because in the fifth edition only H. C. Mukherjee was mentioned. Only H.C. Mukherjee was mentioned and if you will read the 6th edition that of M. Lakshmi Kant, there I got a information that there were two vice president. One was H.C. Mukherjee and second was V.T. Krishna Swami. So that you can note down both the names because it may, ask, it may be asked ki how many vice presidents were in the constituent assembly then your answer will be two. One H.C. Mukherjee that we all know from the days and second is V.T. Krishna Swami. So two were there. In fifth edition of Lakshmi Khan, the name of V.T. Krishna Swami was not there. Then I read the sixth edition, then I found his name. So that was an interesting thing because the name was not mentioned in the fifth edition, but it is being mentioned in the sixth edition of M. Lakshmi Khan that is considered as the Bible of Indian polity for UPSC aspirants. So there you can note down both the names guys because it may be asked in your exam. Clear to all of you so that you can note both the names H.C. Mukherjee and V.T. Krishna Swami. Clear all of you this is being mentioned in the 6th edition so that was I was also surprised while going through this so then I read through other sources as well. Yes, yes, constituent assembly was constituted on 9 December and in which Sachidanand Sinha became the president and on 11 December constituent assembly chose the regular president, vice president and constitutional advisor. So please make the note of V.T. Krishna Swami also that is mentioned in the 6th edition of Lakshmi Kant. Not in fact it is in the 5th edition. So while, while I was reading through it, then I found the interesting thing. Clear? Yes. Uh, that is H.C. Mukherjee and V.T. Krishna Swami. Yes, Putin. So I hope my dear learners, is it clear to all of you and please make a note of this. Please make a note of this. So that is the beauty. Then I thought ki why it is not being mentioned in the 5th edition. So the I wrote an email to M. Lakshmikant on his official ID. Ki, Sir, you have not mentioned V.T. Krishna Swami in the formation of constituent assembly in your 5th edition and you are mentioning the name it is in 6th edition. So then I dropped him a mail as well. So that happens with me. So correct answer will be guys option A that is Dr. Rajendra Prashad. Now guys come to the next question. Okay, which of the following schedules of the Indian constitution deals with the form of oath or affirmation? So oath or affirmation that is being discussed in which particular form? Is uh, which particular schedule? Second schedule, third schedule, fourth schedule, seventh schedule? Okay, so it is mentioned in the which schedule of the Indian constitution. Very good guys, everyone is correct. So that is the oath and affirmation. Who conducts the oath and what will be the structure of the oath? 
so that is in schedule 3 salary allowances plus other emoluments that is in schedule second schedule fourth is allocation of seats of states of states in Rajya Sabha allocation of seats of states in Rajya Sabha and schedule seven that discusses with the three list union list state list and concurrent list union state and concurrent therefore guys correct answer will be option b that is schedule 3 that discusses with the oath and affirmation and schedule 4 discusses with the location of seats of states in Rajya Sabha now what is the basis of allocation of seats of states basis of allocation of seats of states in Rajya Sabha guys so on what basis the seats are allocated in Rajya Sabha can you tell me the answer on what basis seats are allocated in the state of Rajya Sabha so seats are allocated according to the states in Rajya Sabha on what basis on what basis guys On what basis the seats are allocated in Rajya Sabha? Can you tell me? Okay, very good guys. That is the number of population. Definitely. It is according to the number of population. So that is according to the population. Population of the state. So same it is with the Lok Sabha. Same with Lok Sabha also and population it is considered 1971 census so population it is not the present population it is the population of 1971 census so population that we take that is the 1971 census so correct answer will be guys option b that is the schedule 3 now let's come to the next question Ki emergency provision they are contained in which part of the Indian constitution so provision related to the emergency that is in the which part of Indian constitution is it in part 9 part 14 part 20 part 18 so emergency provisions they are in which part of the Indian constitution and your timer has already started Okay, let's see the correct answer. So Chandrasekhar, Vijay, Chantharu, everyone, Sharvani, everyone is going with option D. And guys, correct answer will be also option D that is in part 18. So part 18, we have the emergency provisions. Then part 9 that is related to Panchayat. Panchayati Raj system, then part 14, part 14 it is with the part 20 that is the amendment of constitution, part 14 that is related to services under center and states. Now, part 18 that detects the emergency provision. Now, emergency. Suspension of fundamental rights. 
सस्पेंशन ऑफ फंडामेंटल राइट्स ड्यूरिंग एमरजेंसी एंड एमरजेंसी प्रोविजन्स इन हैंड्स ऑफ सेंटर बोथ आर अडॉप्टेड फ्रॉम वेयर सो सस्पेंशन ऑफ फंडामेंटल राइट ड्यूरिंग एमरजेंसी एंड द नेक्स्ट इज की इमरजेंसी प्रोविजन इन द हैंड्स ऑफ सेंटर इट इज अडॉप्टेड फ्रॉम वेयर सो इट इज अडॉप्टेड बोथ आर अडॉप्टेड फ्रॉम विच कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन माई क्वेश्चन टू यू इज बिकॉज दिस इज अ वेरी कंफ्यूजिंग क्वेश्चन पार्ट एटीन दैट इज फ्रॉम आर्टिकल थ्री फिफ्टी टू थ्री फिफ्टी सिक्स एंड थ्री सिक्सटी so suspension of fundamental rights during emergency that has been adopted from constitution of germany that is called weimar constitution that is the constitution of germany it is adopted from german constitution now the next thing emergency provisions in the hand of center it is adopted from constitution of which country guys very good the second one is adopted from the government of india act definitely correct so that is adopted from government of india act 1935 so that has been adopted from government of india act 1935 so first one is adopted from the weimar constitution that is called the german constitution and second it is adopted from government of india act 1935 therefore correct answer will be part 18 that is the emergency provision so that is related to emergency provisions very good guys now i can well understand ki the concepts are good and once you will go in the exam you can have a blast in fact and definitely this type of question we are finding ki they will definitely change the level of the question and can will give more conceptual question in every subject to eliminate the horses for the main exam or tier 2 exam so correct answer will be guys option d that is part 18 okay what type which type of institution is state finance commission now my dear learners what type of institution is state fin state finance commission is it statutory institution constitutional institution non constitutional institution or no option is correct so what type of institution is state finance commission what type of institution is state finance commission which type of institution is state finance commission guys let's see the correct answer which type of institution it is so option b vish vinshuk vishnu k so that is option b b that is the constitutional institution definitely and it is article 243 i so the state finance commission that is in article 243 i and that i is capital i it is not small i Article two forty three I, and it is constituted by governor. Constituted by governor after every five year to review the financial condition of panchayat. and municipality municipality and municipal corporation to review the financial condition of municipality and municipal corporation 
this state finance commission is constituted which is mentioned in article 243i and that is in part 9 and part 9 article 243 to article 243o so that is in part 9 article 243 to article 243o 243 to article 243o and state election commission that is article 243k state election commission that is article 243k so correct answer will be guys option b that is the constitutional institution so that is a constitutional institution guys that is state finance commission that is constituted by governor to review the financial position of panchayat and municipality so correct answer will be option b now one third of the members retire vidhan parishad after how many years so how many years after how many years one third of the member retire of the one third members of the vidhan parishad they are retired so after how many years guys the member of vidhan parishad they are retired one third of the member they retired after how many years so now the timer has already started please answer the question guys please answer the question timer has already started okay mr putin chandrasekhar very good that is a very easy question vidhan parishad that is legislative council so vidhan parishad legislative council so one third of the members members they retire after every two years so term of one member is equal to three into two that is six years the term of one member that will become six years so definitely it is retired after every two years so correct answer will be option b now maximum number of members maximum number of members in legislative council legislative council it is of up and minimum number it is of telangana telangana has 40 and up has 100 so that is the maximum and minimum number of member in the legislative council and it is defined in article 169 that is the upper house of the state legislature that is the upper house of the state legislature 169 now my dear the my question to you is ki which authority conducts the election of vidhan parishad which authority conducts the election which authority conducts the election of vidhan parishad which authority conducts the election of vidhan parishad so definitely that is option b that is two years maximum the seats it is in uh, up legislative council 100 seats and minimum we have in telangana that is only 40 seats so the minimum is 40 maximum seats it is 100 in up yes total we have six state definitely chandrasekhar total we have six state where we have the legislative council so that is being conducted by election commission of india very good that is being conducted by election commission of india that is mentioned in part 15 article 324 to article 329 so that is mentioned in the part 15 that is the election commission of india definitely guys it is not state election commission it is election commission of india that is mentioned in part 15 that is mentioned in part 15 
in sikkim guys where sikkim so in sikkim we have minimum number of states minimum number of judges in high court it is not like that ki sikkim where you will find legislative council it is in only six states of india therefore correct answer will be what it will be option b correct answer will be guys option b i hope it is clear to all of you then do let me know then we will be moving to the next question is it clear to all of you guys is it clear guys shall i move to the next question I hope it is clear guys let's move to the next question and let's discuss what next question is for us so let's move to the next question okay guys before moving to the next question there is a very lucrative offer for you and the lucrative offer what it is ki just example is celebrating the fourth foundation year and foundation day we are offering flat 75% discount on our all courses just you have to use the gift 75 so it is a foundation day special offer in which flat 75% discount will be will be given you on the all courses so flat 75% discount discount on all the courses and this offer is valid till today that is till today that is midnight so if any one of you and any of your friends or family member wishes to learn wishes to get uh, being mentored by example so this is being one of the lucrative offers that we are offering and just you have to use the code gift 75 to avail this offer now after using this offer what will be the price now the we have the batches we have bilingual batches that means both in english and hindi hindi plus english and for ssc cgl 2022 23 for tier 1 and tier 2 we have an officer batch and after applying the gift 75 code that will be of just 999 rupees so hmm, so i am just i will be in the i will be in the english medium batch guys i will not be taking the batches in this but i will not be taking the class in this particular batch because it is a bilingual and i will be taking only in english so soon we will be launching the english medium batches as well then if you are preparing for the stenographer examination so foundation batch if you apply the gift 75 then you will be getting this course in just 499 that is less than 500 a price less than a price of a double pizza other than this if you are preparing for cpo then you have we have a foundation batch for you all also and after applying the gift 75 that will become just 749 so it is a very so maximum satisfaction maximum offerings in minimum price maximum offering in minimum price that we are giving maximum offering in minimum price we are giving so batches will be in the bilingual medium english plus hindi and these all were a detailed plans it is a detailed plan and we are of giving maximum offerings in minimum price and that all will run these all batches will run on our example app and what are the features of this particular app first of all guys you will be getting the job alerts then structured courses free pdfs all india scholarship test unlimited quizzes to practice and all the paid batches that will run on example app so our paid batches will run on example app 
and we are offering lot of the things which is completely free for everyone that is the job alert so that you cannot miss any vacancy during the your preparation then you have the structured paid courses free pdfs of all the sessions unlimited quizzes and practice free previous year pdf and all india scholarship test plus current affairs as well and this current affairs that will be bilingual so that will be in hindi plus it will be in english that will satisfy the need of both the medium so if you are comfortable in hindi you can read the things in hindi if you are comfortable in english you can read the things in english and then it will be comfortable for the students of both the medium so i hope guys this is clear to all of you and about our special value offering that we are giving on the seven hour giving on the foundation day now how you have to download this app this is very simple already we have the ios version we don't we don't have the ios version or the apple version of the exam book first of all you have to go to google play store search exam book once you will search exam book the screen will appear like this exam book sarkari naukri prep then if you are using for the first time you have to click on install and after installing if you are using for the first time please click on let's register once you will click on let's register a small form will be open before you there you have to fill basic details and then you have to tick the check box and you have to click on let's register once you will click on let's register the app will get registered and you can start using the facilities that is given in the app so we are offering our paid courses 75% off just to celebrate our foundation day and this is valid till today midnight so if you want to prepare in the bilingual medium so this is a very good batch to enroll for and that is not only for tier 1 of cgl tier 1 plus tier 2 both tier will be catered so i hope guys you people have understood what are the offerings we are giving on our example app and what are the offerings we are giving in our paid batches so these all will be the structured page batches everything that will be given study plan everything that will be given in detail now come to the next question guys and this was all about our app so therefore i thought to explain you ki how to download what type of offerings we are giving what type of benefits that we are giving to our dear students so come to the next question ki which of the following is not among a qualification to become judge in supreme court so if a person wants to become judge in supreme court which qualification does not he needs which qualification he does not needs which qualification does he does not needs okay let's see the correct answer vijay is saying option d okay harish is saying then putin is also saying option d option d so qualification is not needed first of all he should have been the judge in a high court one or more high court for a minimum period of 5 year he should be distinguished jurist in the option of the president he must be a citizen of india or must have worked in one or more high court for a minimum period of 10 years so it is must be above 35 years of age this is not the qualification it is not the qualification because there is no minimum age no minimum age to become judge in high court and supreme court there is no minimum age to become judge in high court and supreme court because the power of jurisprudence will come at what age that is not known to any one so the power of jurisprudence will come at what age it is not known therefore we there is no minimum age although we have maximum age for supreme court it is 65 years and for high court it is 62 years and power of jurisprudence means ki power to do the justice power to do the justice 
that is called power of jurisprudence that is power to do the justice so power to do the justice will come at what age that is not known to anyone so he have acted as a judge for minimum period of five year he must be distinguished jurist in the eyes of president must be citizen of india or must have worked as an advocate in one or more high courts for minimum period of 10 years for a minimum period of 10 years this is one more qualification if you are not a judge and if you are not a distinguished jurist in the eyes of president that will also work so if you have worked as one or worked in worked as advocate in one or more high courts or in fact in supreme court also for a minimum period of 10 years then you are eligible to become the judge in the supreme court so then you are eligible to become judge in the supreme court so must have acted as a high court judge for minimum period of five years or must have worked as advocate in one high court or more than one high court for a period of 10 years now guys you all know i think you all know ki what is the difference between a lawyer and a advocate i hope everyone knows ki when you say ki you are a lawyer and when you say you are an advocate so do you know the difference between an advocate and a lawyer and a barrister does anyone know what is the difference between a lawyer barrister and advocate so does anyone know what is the difference between a lawyer and an advocate once we say ki that person is a lawyer then we say ki that person is an advocate so what's the difference between a lawyer and an advocate first of all do tell me then i will tell you what is barrister okay so sharvani does not know okay i will be telling you it's a very interesting thing ki if you are a law graduate if you are just a law graduate you have did ba llb or you have did llb either it is 3 years either it is 5 years does not matter if you have did llb then you are a lawyer if you have just completed your law degree so if you have completed if you have studied law for 3 years or 5 years depending upon the condition then you are a lawyer hmm first then if you will if you become lawyer and then you pass the exam of bci that is the bar council of india so if you pass the examination of bar council of india then a number will be given to you you will be registered and then you will become advocate so once you clear the exam of bci that is the bar council of india then you will be given a registered you will be given a unique number and then you will be considered as advocate so it is not for the practice it is not for the practice it will depend upon the if it will depend ki once you will click once you will clear the bar council of india exam then you will become an advocate and by the time you have not cleared the bar council of india exam then you are lawyer so if you are a law graduate simply you did bllb or a bcom llb bsc llb whatever it is just it is llb then you are lawyer and once you clear the exam of bci then you will become advocate clear and once you complete your degree of law from england then you will become barrister so gandhi ji was barrister because he uh, studied law from inner temple inner temple college that is in london so once you read the once you study law from london that is in united kingdom then you will become barrister if you complete your study of law from england if you complete your study of law from england so go to england complete the study of law then you will be treated as barrister so you will become barrister vijay chandra clear gandhi ji was a barrister pandit nehru was a barrister they all cleared they all studied the law from england so once you complete the study of law from england then you will become barrister and advocate you complete the law from once you complete the law and you clear the exam of bar council of india then you will become advocate then you will be given the registered number and that is called vakalat nama in hindi then that is will be on your official stamp and once you will put that official stamp you are authorized to uh, argue in any court of india then you are authorized to argue in any court of india you can argue in supreme court you can argue in high court you can argue in in fact the district and session court as well or the subordinate court as well so clear the exam of bar council of india then 
so law graduate you are a lawyer then if you complete if you clear the exam of bci then you will become advocate and if you study the law from england then you will become barrister so gandhi ji was barrister he cleared his law from inner temple college that is in london so at that point of time people also go to foreign country to study once people used to come to our country to study so correct answer will be guys it is option d and this type of question ha huh, who is more credible both are credible so if you have heard the name of hari salve he always does the virtual hearing and he takes the he fights he argues the cases from london so that totally depends upon what's the level of yours for example ram jethmalani he was not from any nlu but he was a very prominent advocate uh, we have hari salve also hari salve is also a very prominent advocate but he is a barrister he has completed some of his degree from london also <coughs> so that both are credible that totally depends upon you like everyone knows about ram jethmalani the very famous personality although he is no more but he was a very famous personality <coughs> now guys come to the next question ki according to the constitution of india the judges of the supreme court they retire at what age so at what age judges of the supreme court they are retired judges of the supreme court at what age they are retired judges of the supreme court at what age they are retired guys very easy question <coughs> so supreme court judges they are retired at the age of 65 so 65 years the judges of the supreme court they are retired 65 years and 62 years that is the judges of high court judges of the high court they retired at the age of 62 years now come to the next question come to the next question guys that was an easy question to answer in fact okay guys so what will be the correct answer that's a very easy question so that is removed by the process of impeachment impeachment that is defined in article 61 and that is none other than the president of india so president of india is only impeached other than they are removed and the governor guys he is removed by president as he works up to the pleasure of the president chief minister can be removed by the governor prime minister can be removed by the president in fact and the ground of impeachment impeachment is violation of constitution violation of constitution that means he if he does anything which is against the constitution of india and the impeachment of president it is adopted from us constitution so it is adopted from the constitution of usa therefore correct answer will be guys option c that is the president of india so president of india can be impeached other than this for other post they are completely removed so removal is for the other post impeachment is only for the president of india and it is adopted from us constitution that is the impeachment process of president so i hope guys this should be clear to all of you so correct answer will be option c now come to the next question 
कि विच आर्टिकल ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन हैज प्रोवाइडेड द ऑफिस ऑफ एडवोकेट जनरल ऑफ द स्टेट एडवोकेट जनरल इट इज मैंशन इन विच आर्टिकल ऑफ द इंडियन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन सो एडवोकेट जनरल इट इज इट इज मैंशन इन विच आर्टिकल ऑफ इंडियन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन एडवोकेट जनरल इट इज मैंशन इन विच आर्टिकल ऑफ द इंडियन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन No, no. The U.S. say that is to define a particular country. We do not say the U.S. It is adopted from the U from the U.S. say, but the India is wrong. So the it is specially to define any particular important thing. So that is a more question related to grammar and less related to the polity. So it is more related to the English grammar. So I will be suggesting you to please confirm this thing from either from Tosif sir or from Juhi ma'am. They can tell you in much. better way than i i can just tell you the constitutional aspect i cannot tell you the grammatical aspect okay so the constitution of india provided the office of advocate general office of advocate general advocate general is the highest law officer of state and it is defined in article 165 and the qualification is up to the play, is the same as the judge of high court and the term is up to the pleasure of president term is up to the pleasure of the president so that is in article 165 guys 168 that is the constitution of the state legislature or the composition of state legislature article 169 that is for the legislative council 170 that is of the legislative assembly so correct answer will be guys option b that is article 165 that discusses the hmm. so that is more related to the his, uh, grammar less related to the polity so correct answer will be guys it is article 165 that discusses with the uh, advocate general of the state so correct answer will be option b now this is a very good question let's see how many of you can answer this ki the gulo the guillotine closer motion refers to many and discussed laws put on the will uh, put on the vote together the clause or the lengthy resolution are grouped into the parts of for the debate for the breach of parliamentary privilege or sudden closure of a matter to give importance to new urgent matter what is governor appoints gov uh, governor appoints advocate general of the state definitely like attorney general is appointed by president advocate general is appointed by the governor okay let's see the correct answer guys first first of all what is guillotine try to understand guillotine guillotine was was a machine that was used to chop heads during french revolution during french revolution so it was a machine that used to chop the heads of the revolters during the french revolution 
नाउ गाइज वॉट हैपन्स इन गिलोटीन मोशन वॉट हैपन्स कि वेन देर इज टू मच ऑफ द थिंग्स दैट हैज बिन लेफ्ट टू डिस्कस एंड द स्पीकर इज सींग कि टाइम इज गेटिंग आउट सी वॉट हैपन्स कि ये हर्षा इट इज ऑप्शन ए फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वॉट हैपन्स इन गिलोटीन मोशन कि वेन द प्रेजाइडिंग ऑफिसर ऑफ द हाउस he saw or she saw ki there are many things which is yet to be discussed many things on a bill that is yet to be discussed or that has to be discussed but the time is running out but the time is running out and we don't and they don't have enough time to discuss all the provisions related to the bill so simply the speaker or the presiding officer say ki okay now the time is up now let's start the voting process and puts all the resolution and put all the bills put all the things which is yet to be discussed on the vote once it is passed then it is all clear and if it is defeated then it will be nullified so the correct answer will be option a ki many undiscussed clauses of a bill that is put together because of the shortage of time because of the shortage of time or because of the time is running so that is the guillotine motion in which the undisclosed clause they are put on the vote together because of the shortage of the time so once it is being put together finally if the bill it is being passed then it will be uh, it will be implemented and if not then it will be nullified so that is called guillotine closer guillotine it was a instrument that used to chop the heads during the french revolution i hope my dear students is it clear to all of you is it clear to all of you guys ki what is guillotine when the pending things are being put together to for the vote because of the shortage of the time because of the shortage of the time is it clear guys shall i move to the next question i hope it is clear to all of you is it clear okay so if it is clear guys then it was a new thing and it is not a new thing guillotine it is simply to stop the discussion because of the shortage of the time and to put the provisions that is the undisclosed clause provision on the vote together so correct answer will be option a now come to the next question that's a easy question for you all so sometimes typical question is succeeded by easy one so that again you can gain the confidence of yours and start answering the question properly next is ki which article of the constitution abolishes the untouchability very easy question abolition of untouchability that is a very easy question to answer very easy question to answer guys very very easy question and racial remarks giving the racial comments or giving the racial remarks that also comes under article 17 yes so correct answer will be option d that is abolition of untouchability and giving the racial comments or giving the racial remarks that also comes under the same racial comments and remarks article 18 abolition of titles article 20 that is uh that is about the article 19 six democratic freedoms and article 20 is freedom from conviction in certain offenses freedom from conviction in certain offenses so correct answer will be option d and this is guys first of all it is absolute right in nature so it is an absolute right in nature that means it has no exception so it is not like that ki in this particular condition you can practice untouchability in that particular condition you cannot practice untouchability so practicing of untouchability is completely banned in india so it has no exception at all 
सो आई होप इट इज क्लियर टू ऑल ऑफ यू गाइज दैट इज प्रैक्टिसिंग अनटचेबिलिटी इट इज कंप्लीटली बैन इन इंडिया सो कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन प्रोहिबिट्स अनटचेबिलिटी एंड इट इज एन एब्सोल्यूट राइट इन नेचर दैट मीन्स इट हैज नो एक्सेप्शन इट हैज नो एक्सेप्शन एट ऑल देयर फोर करेक्ट आंसर विल बी ऑप्शन डी सो आई होप गाइज दिस शुड बी क्लियर टू ऑल ऑफ यू एंड दैट वॉज एन इजी क्वेश्चन फॉर अस टू आंसर एज वेल नाउ कम टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन दैट्स अ वेरी गुड क्वेश्चन so the question is ki who among the following cannot vote in the election of vice president so who among the following cannot vote in the election of vice president Who among the following cannot vote in the election of the vice president? Okay, guys, let's see the correct one. Correct answers. First of all, cannot vote in the election of vice president. That is the. That is option C. Elected members of the state legislative assembly because electoral college. college of vice president that is elected members of parliament that is members of parliament members of parliament and members means uh, elected plus nominated and parliament means rajya sabha and lok sabha so elected plus nominated members of the parliament they will only vote in the presidential election so there is no role of elected members of legislative assembly so no role of state legislature no role of state legislature in election of vice president in the election of vice president so correct answer will be option c guys there is no role of election there is no role of elected members of legislative state legislature in the election of vice president so correct answer will be guys option c i hope it is clear to all of you guys then do let me know there is no role of state legislature so is that clear to all of you now guys one thing you should tell me ki what is the number of proposer and what is the number of seconders what is the minimum number of proposer and seconder for the vice presidential election See now we have read about the president. That only you need to have the support of hundred MPs. Now 
to contest to file the nomination paper of vice president to file nomination for vice president election support of how many mps is needed now if you want to contest the election of vice president support of how many mps are needed so support of how many mps are needed sharvani you are right but 40 and 40 that became something wrong so if you want to contest the election of the vice president of india you need support of 40 mps that is minimum 40 mps out of this 20 should be proposer and 20 should be seconders and both should be different and security deposit that is 15k in RBI. So the security deposit is 15k in RBI so minimum number of MPs that is needed is 40 and minimum support of 40 MPs is needed and out of which 20 will be the proposer and 20 will be the seconders and 15,000 rupees will be deposited in RBI as a security. So 15,000 rupees will be deposited in security. I hope guys that is clear to all of you. Okay, so guys now it was all about this. Let's move to the next question. So this was about the number of president number of proposer number of seconder and what is the security deposit that is being kept proposer means ki one who will propose your name one who will put the name of yours that is forward so that is proposer and those person who will back the name they are called seconders for example if you want to contest vice presidential election so 40 of us will propose ki vijay from our side vijay is the candidate for the vice president post now other 40 will say ki, okay this is the same from our side also so you must have seen in uh, some of the rallies some people says ki tum sangharsh karo and then some says ki hum tumhare saath hain so for example those who say sangharsh karo they are proposers and one who says ki hum tumhare saath hain they are called seconders so this is the simple way to understand what is the proposal and seconder ones who will forward your name they are called proposer and ones who will back your name they are called seconders so ones who will forward your name that is called proposer one who will back your name they are called seconders so i hope vijay it is clear ki what is proposer what is seconder minimum 20 proposer minimum 20 seconder and both should be different it is or not it will be not like this ki those who will propose your name they will back your name also those who will propose your name they will back your name also so both should be different I hope my dear it is clear to all of you so this thing you should always keep in the mind Ki both should be different one. now come to the next question Ki who was the chairman of second backward class commission second backward class commission is it Jyotiba Phule, Bhim Rao Ambedkar, BP Mandal, Kaka Kalekar so who was the chairman of second backward class commission Chairman of Second Backward Class Commission. Chairman of Second Backward Class Commission from where the 27% reservation that was being given to OBC community that was being flashed. 
सो लेट सी द करेक्ट आंसर विजय इज सेंग ऑप्शन सी शारवनी इज ऑल्सो गोइंग विथ ऑप्शन सी गाइज इफ आई टॉक अबाउट बैकवर्ड क्लास दैट इज द ओबीसी ओबीसी कम्युनिटी एंड एन सी बी सी दैट इज गिवेन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल स्टेटस थ्रू आर्टिकल थ्री थर्टी एट बी एन सी बी सी दैट इज नेशनल कमीशन ऑफ द बैकवर्ड क्लासेस ज्योतिबा फुले ही वॉज इन नाइनटीन सेंचुरी एटीन सेवेंटी थ्री ही वॉज द फाउंडर ऑफ सत्य शोधक समाज एटीन सेवेंटी थ्री फाउंडेड सत्य शोधक समाज इन पुणे रोड द बुक गुलामगिरी एंड हिज वाइफ सावित्री बाई फुले शी वॉज द फर्स्ट फीमेल टीचर भीमराव अंबेडकर ही वॉज द फर्स्ट लॉ मिनिस्टर बी पी मंडल नाइनटीन सेवेंटी नाइन दैट वॉज जनता पार्टी गवर्नमेंट फुल नेम वॉज बिंदेश्वरी प्रसाद मंडल ब्रिंदेश्वरी प्रसाद मंडल काका कालेकर फर्स्ट बैकवर्ड क्लास कमीशन बैकवर्ड कमीशन सो इट इज बिंदेश्वरी प्रसाद मंडल बीपी मंडल 1979 बिंदेश्वरी प्रसाद मंडल बिंदेश्वरी प्रसाद मंडल सो द करेक्ट आंसर विल बी ऑप्शन सी दैट इज बिंदेश्वरी प्रसाद मंडल एंड वेन काका कालेकर कमीशन वॉज बींग कॉन्स्टिट्यूटेड वेन काका कालेकर कमीशन so that was in which year it was established guys kaka kalekar commission that was established in which year that was in 1953 so that was constituted in year 1953 kaka kalekar so correct answer will be option See that is Bindeshwari Prasad Mandal, 1979 Janata Party government formed Kaka Kalekar Commission 1953, and it was during the time of Pandit Nehru. So correct answer will be Bindeshwari Prasad Mandal. Now NCBC it is a constitutional body that is through 102nd Amendment Act it was given the constitutional status. So correct answer will be option B, guys. That is Bindeshwari Prasad Mandal. so correct answer will be option c that is bindeshwari prasad mandal kaka kalekar 1953 bhim rao ambedkar he was the first law minister of india so let's come to the next question guys let's move to the next question and let's see what next question is for us and through this 27% obc reservation and this backward means social and educational backward what it means social and educational backward social and educational backward so backward what it means social and educational backward so backward does not means the economic backward so that is under ews category economic backwardness that comes under ews category whereas social and educational backward that is under sc st and obc that is the back that is the definition of backwardness in our constitution that should be the social backwardness and educational backwardness therefore correct answer will be option c now come to the next question guys let's move to the next question next question we have ki the concept of fundamental duties was taken from where so from where guys you have taken the concept of the fundamental duties very easy question one set of question will be assisted by an easy one 
सो नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन वी हैव कि द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ फंडामेंटल ड्यूटीज इट इज अडॉप्टेड फ्रॉम विच कंट्री इज इट यूएसएसआर यूएसए जर्मनी ऑस्ट्रेलिया इजी क्वेश्चन फॉर ऑल ऑफ यू इजी क्वेश्चन फॉर ऑल ऑफ यू ओके लेट सी द करेक्ट आंसर द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ फंडामेंटल ड्यूटीज दैट इज इन पार्ट फोर ए एंड ओनली वी हैव वन आर्टिकल दैट इज आर्टिकल फिफ्टी वन ए एंड इट इज अडॉप्टेड फ्रॉम यूएसएसआर और सिंपली यू कैन से रशिया एंड इट वॉज नॉट देयर मैंशन इन द ओरिजिनल कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन नॉट मैंशन in original constitution not mentioned in original constitution it was added through 42nd amendment act 1976 on recommendation of sardar swarn singh so it was recommended by the sardar swarn singh committee recommendation and total we have 11 fundamental duties total we have 11 fundamental duties that should be 10 plus 1 that should be total 10 plus 1 so correct answer will be guys option a that is ussr or russia and it was not mentioned in original constitution it was added later on and that committee that was that recommended the fundamental duties that was sardar swarn singh committee during the time of prime ministership of mrs indira gandhi so at that point of time mrs gandhi was the prime minister of india now guys the next question is ki right to move freely throughout the country it is a fundamental right under which article article 24 21 14 or 19 so right to move freely throughout india that is under which article of the indian constitution <clears throat> right to move freely throughout the country okay guys let's see the correct answer that is the trick if you remember it is the samra trick right to move freely throughout india so that is option m and that is under article 19 that is the six democratic freedoms originally it was seven democratic freedom right now it is six then right against exploitation right against exploitation it was in article 23 24 then article 21 right to freedom 19 to 22 and it is under right to equality that is under article 14 to 18 so correct answer will be guys option d that is article 19 correct answer will be option d correct answer will be guys option d now let's come to the next question next question we have ki the first hour of a sitting session of india's lok sabha is devoted to 
सो द फर्स्ट आवर ऑफ एवरी सेशन ऑफ लोकसभा ऑफ इंडिया दैट इज डेडिकेटेड टू विच इज इट डेडिकेटेड टू जीरो आवर क्वेश्चन आवर एजेंडा आवर और नन ऑफ द अब सो फर्स्ट सेशन ऑफ एवरी पार्लियामेंट्री सेशन फर्स्ट फर्स्ट टाइम फर्स्ट है फर्स्ट सेशन ऑफ पार्लियामेंट दैट इज डेडिकेटेड टू वॉट सो फर्स्ट सेशन ऑफ द इंडिया लोकसभा दैट इज डिवोटेड टू वॉट ओके पुतिन इज सेंग जीरो आवर सो बाई द टाइम द एम पी विल कम एंड ही विल बी फ्लडेड विद द क्वेश्चन ऑफ अर्जेंट पब्लिक इंपॉर्टेंस ओके लेट सी शो शारवनी विजय दे आर सेंग ऑप्शन बी सो गाइज द करेक्ट आंसर दैट इज द फर्स्ट सेशन ऑफ एवरी लोकसभा दैट स्टार्ट विद द क्वेश्चन आवर सी स्टैंडर्ड टाइमिंग ऑफ द लोकसभा वॉट इट इज so i am not talking about any special timing so the standard timing is 11 am to 6 pm 11 am to 12 noon that is question hour twelve noon to 1 pm this is zero hour then 1 pm to 2 pm that is lunch hour and 2 pm to 6 pm this is agenda hour and in agenda hour the parliament does the internal working so internal working of the parliament that is being completed in the agenda hour and zero hour concept it is the of the indian parliament so it is an indian parliamentary concept indian parliamentary concept is zero hour and in zero hour guys the question on urgent public importance is being raised so the question that needs the immediate discussion that is being raised in the uh, question zero hour and in question hour start question and start question they are all being raised so for the first session of the lok sabha that starts with the question hour 1 pm to 2 pm that is lunch hour if the parliamentarian goes to take the lunch have their lunch now the subsidy it is being ended from the parliamentary canteen so now you have to pay more to eat the to consume the things or to consume the food item so now you have to pay more because the subsidy on the parliamentary canteen this is all being ended therefore correct answer will be option b guys that is the question hour i hope it is clear to all of you that is the standard timing it is 11 am to 6 pm after 6 you are free you can go anywhere i hope guys this is clear to all of you this is the standard timing of the lok sabha now come to the next question ki the 61st amendment act 1988 which was implemented in 1989 discusses with what so 61st amendment act that was started in 1988 uh 61st amendment act 1988 that discusses what it is reducing the voting age free and compulsory education panchayati raj or size of the council of minister okay let's see the correct answer sharvani is saying option a putin is also saying same thing vijay is also saying so 61st amendment act 1988 that was implemented in 1989 that aim to reduce the voting age from 21 years to 18 years that means it amended the right to vote and right to vote it is a legal right in nature and that is defined in article 326 of the indian constitution free and compulsory education it is 6th amendment act 2002 that is article 21a panchayat 73rd amendment act 1992 then article 243 to article 243 o was added size of the council of minister 92nd amendment act 
नाइन्टी फर्स्ट अमेंडमेंट एक्ट टू थाउजेंड थ्री फिफ्टीन परसेंट ऑफ टोटल स्ट्रेंथ ऑफ लोकसभा इंक्लूडिंग प्राइम मिनिस्टर 15% of the total strength of Lok Sabha, guys, that is including Prime Minister, that is the size of the Council of Minister. So, correct answer will be reducing the voting age earlier, which was 21 years. Now it has been declared 18 years, and this is right to vote, which is considered as the legal right in nature. So, correct answer will be, guys, option A, that is reducing the voting age, and size of the Council of Minister 91st. 91st amendment act 2003 but for delhi it is the 10% of the legislative assembly including chief minister but for delhi it is just 10% so delhi is an exception guys where the size of the council of minister is 10% of the size of the legis of the legislative assembly that includes the chief minister as well so i hope it is clear to everyone shall i move to the next question is it clear to all of you guys shall i move to the next question is it clear to all of you guys shall i move to the next question okay let's move to the next question okay question we have ki who was the vice president of this constituent assembly so we who was the vice president of this constituent assembly k m munshi h c mukherjee g v mavalankar or b n rao so vice president of this constituent assembly that was constituted on 9 december 1946 first meeting was being held then ha definitely no one no see we will be covering the geography also so all the sections will be covered geography history polity eco static gk every section will be covered every section will be covered one by one before the exam we will be covering all the sections and the saturday and sunday they are reserved for the marathons so correct answer will be what guys so vice president of this constituent assembly it was harendra kumar mukherjee and vt krishna swami then km munshi member of drafting committee then gv mavlankar first lok sabha speaker then bn rao benegal narsing rao he was constitutional advisor he was constitutional advisor hmm okay and jovian we will be completing all the things one by one in this particular session so we will be completing all the things one by one whether it will be history geography eco science oh, sorry not science in fact geography history eco polity one by one we will covering all the topics so correct answer will be option b guys that is harendra kumar mukherjee one thing you should also note the name that is vt krishna swami both were the vice president Hmm. so okay so the last batch that i took that was uh, incomplete in fact because i was taking so in one and two batches i completed the geography also there i completed the geography also so that you can see the batches and you can learn although it was for the mts but uh, more than cgl syllabus that was being given there so the recording if there then you can check the geography in fact in the mts 
no no none for cgl chsl batch that i took that session for the cgl batch i took the whole geography right from chapter 1 to chapter last every topic that i have completed with the full gratification and full conceptual understanding so if the videos are available then you can uh, see that videos jovian so that is all i have taken in fact in three batches i have taken the geography in fact there and uh, for the chsl i have completed more than required that was for the cgl everything that is needed for the cgl also that i have discussed over there so that you can check if the video that still is available ha uh, definitely that was the last batch that i took it properly ha uh, sachidanand sinha was the first president uh, first president then after that rajendra prasad definitely so sachidanand sinha was not elected so since he was the oldest member of the constituent assembly at the time of becoming the member his age was 75 years so following the french tradition we appointed him as the president for the first session then regular president became rajendra prasad then regular president became rajendra prasad and dr sachidanand sinha he was the president for the first session only because he was the eldest member and following the french tradition that eldest member should lead the first session we made him the chairman of only first session now come to the next question next question is ki as per the constitution of india the subjects of livestock and animal husbandry it is included in which list so livestock and animal husbandry that is in which list is it in residuary list concurrent list union list or state list so in which list guys you will find the subject hmm. so dr sachidanand sinha he was the he was the member of the constituent assembly cpi that was the person who was uh, who into who just recommended for the formation of the constituent assembly he was the person who recommended this and that was very famous from one of the founder member of cpi who founded this party the name actually i am skipping that is skipping from my mind so livestock and animal husbandry that is in the state list residuary list that is an imaginary list concurrent list earlier we have 47 subjects now we have 52 the state the sub uh, the list on which both center and state can make law so subjects in the concurrent list where center plus states can make law union list only center 97 subjects now we have 100 state list states only 66 now we have 61 and correct answer will be guys it is in the state list hmm. Hmm. so that was the person who was that was m n roy so manvendra nath roy so that was the name that was skipping manvendra nath roy he was from the communist party of india and he recommended the formation of constituent assembly to frame the constitution of india so jovian that was m n roy manvendra nath roy he was the person who recommended the formation of constituent assembly around 1932 34 so that the constitution of india can be framed because without constituent assembly you cannot frame the constitution of india so formation of constituent assembly first of all it was being proposed by uh, officially it was being proposed by manavendra nath roy although in 1893 swaraj bill uh bal gangadhar tilak also said about the formation of constituent assembly but none of them taken seriously but the officially it was through the nine it was in 1934 by m n roy m n roy demanded officially although in 1893 in swaraj bill uh, bal gangadhar tilak also demanded the formation of constituent assembly so if it, if swaraj bill it is in the option then go for it other than then it will be manavendra nath roy he was the founder member of cpi he was one of the founder members of cpi 
सो करेक्ट आंसर विल बी गाइज लाइफ स्टॉक एनिमल हजबेंड्री दिस टाइप ऑफ क्वेश्चन कैन बी आस्ट कि विच पर्टिकुलर सब्जेक्ट इट इज इन विच लिस्ट विच पर्टिकुलर सब्जेक्ट विच इज इन विच लिस्ट सो स्लोली वी विल बी डूइंग दिस टाइप ऑफ क्वेश्चन एज वेल कि इफ दिस टाइप ऑफ क्वेश्चन कम्स देन यू कैन एबल टू आंसर इट नाउ पार्ट एट ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन डिस्कसेज विद द वॉट पार्ट एट पंचायत स्टेट्स यूनियन टेरिटरीज म्युनिसिपैलिटीज पार्ट एट डिस्कसेज विद द वॉट पार्ट एट डिस्कसेज विथ वॉट गाइज इज इट पंचायत स्टेट्स यूनियन टेरिटरी और म्युनिसिपैलिटीज See if I talk about part एट part नाइन that is of this part सिक्स part नाइन a municipalities and municipal corporation that will be part एट part एट and total number of UTs total UTs in India how many UTs are in India guys How many union territories are in India? So can you tell me the number of union territories in India? Can you tell me the number of union territories in India? Can you tell me the number of union territories are in India? Number of union territories Yes, the number of union territories is not six. It is total eight union territories. Earlier it was nine, and Daman and Div plus Dadar and Nagar Haveli is merged, and their combined capital is Daman. and their combined capital is daman so correct answer will be option c the number of union territories is 8 earlier it was 9 now it has became 8 so with the formation of the jammu kashmir as a union territory and ladakh has a ut it became 9 now when daman and diu and dadra nagar haveli they got merged so that became 8 so 28 states and 8 union territories we have so that is the administrative structure of india 28 states and 8 union territories now it's a very good question guys let's see how many of you can remember the fact ki the 42nd amendment act transferred five subject from state list to concurrent list which of the following was not among these five so through 42nd amendment act five subjects they were transferred from state list to concurrent list therefore in state list the number became 61 and current and concurrent list the number became 52 so out of this which was not among these five okay let's see the correct answer shavani is first to answer so she is saying option d okay family planning okay vijay is also giving the same answer so what will be the correct thing so correct answer will be guys option d c so earlier we have the the sub five subjects the five subjects which were transferred first is for first is education second is forestry third is protection of wild animals fourth is weight and measure and fifth is principle of justice these are the five subjects which was transferred from state list to concurrent so the number of subject in state list 66 to 61 and concurrent from 47 to 52 so these were the five subjects that was being transferred 
सो आई होप दैट इज क्लियर टू एवरी वन एंड दिस थिंग वी हैव रेड ऑल्सो कि द फाइव सब्जेक्ट्स दैट वॉज ट्रांसफर्ड फ्रॉम द स्टेट लिस्ट टू कंकरेंट लिस्ट देयर फॉर द नंबर ऑफ सब्जेक्ट्स इन स्टेट लिस्ट दैट वॉज रिड्यूस फ्रॉम सिक्सटी सिक्स टू सिक्सटी वन एंड नंबर ऑफ सब्जेक्ट्स इन द कंकरेंट लिस्ट दैट वॉज रिड्यूस फ्रॉम फोर्टी सेवन टू फिफ्टी टू नाउ कम टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन Now guys come to the next question ki which of the following is not true about the legislative council composition which of the following is not true about legislative council composition So which of the following is not true guys about this so legislative council composition legislative council guys if i talk about legislative council everyone is saying option d 5 by 6 they are elected and 1 by 6 nominated by governor so that is 1/3 of the member nominated by governor it is not 1/3 it is 1/6 1/12 that is related by teacher One twelfth by graduates, one third by the MLAs, and one third by members of local bodies. Plus one sixth they are nominated by governor. So one third plus one third plus one twelfth plus one twelfth. So if you will take the LCM, that will become twelve four plus four plus one plus one. So five by twelve, that is, sorry, ten by twelve. That will become ten by twelve. So finally, it will become five five by six. They are elected, and one by six they are nominated. So one twelfth by legist by teachers, one twelfth by registered graduates, one third they are elected by the members of the legislative assembly. and one third they are elected by the members of local bodies so if this is how guys that will become 5 by 6 they are elected and 1 by 6 they are nominated this is how this 5 by 6 comes and one third it is not one third guys it is 1/6 they are nominated by governor so correct answer will be option d correct answer will be option d now come to the next question Okay, which is the youngest high court in India? So I hope everyone has understood this point. And now we have to discuss which is the youngest high court in India. Is it Calcutta High Court, Andhra Pradesh High Court, Guwahati High Court, or Allahabad High Court? So which of the following is the youngest high court in India? Okay, let's see the correct answer. Sharvani is saying option B. Good. Then Vijay is also going with option B, so that's more good. See the youngest high court, guys. That is the Andhra Pradesh High Court, Calcutta High Court, eighteen sixty-two. Then Guwahati High Court, nineteen forty-eight. Then Allahabad, eighteen sixty-six. And when Andhra Pradesh High Court was established, so that is located in Amravati. and this is the 25th high court so when andhra pradesh high court was established guys can you tell me the year andhra pradesh high court that was established in which year
so that is in 2019 very good guys that is in 2019 so that was established in 2019 that is in 2019 so correct answer will be guys option b amravati high court that that is located in amravati it is andhra pradesh high court that was in 2019 okay so dear students with this we come up with the end of our today's marathon session and i hope guys you must have enjoyed the marathon and found the question interesting and informative and that is also according to the need of exam so if it is this then don't forget to like and share the video and those who are new to our channel don't forget to subscribe english medium prep by example so that was the all about the today's marathon and this is the free youtube class schedule for our cpo chsl and stenographer examination and in evening guys we have the schedule for the ssc cgl exam so is it clear to all of you guys then do let me know so i hope guys that the oldest high court it is the calcutta high court calcutta high court that was established in 1st july 1862 oldest it is the calcutta high court my dear oldest is the calcutta let me write oldest high court is the calcutta high court and youngest high court is the amravati so oldest high court it is definitely prashant whenever we will start i will be informing you in advance about the th same oldest it is the calcutta high court oldest high court that is the calcutta high court so guys with this we conclude the session of today and i hope you must have enjoyed the marathon and found this useful and interesting so don't forget to like and share the video and as well as those who are new to our channel don't forget to subscribe the channel so that was all for the day guys let's meet in the next session tomorrow we have the regular session so from monday to friday we have the regular session saturday and sundays that is the weekend they are reserved for the marathons so bye bye everyone let's meet in the next session that is on tomorrow sharp at 11 am